A very warm welcome to you. Many thanks for being with us on this week's edition of the program. We remain your source for all the latest happenings in the world of business. My name is Lucy Lube. You are welcome. On our line of this week, first we join Faith and her guest, Professor Adams Adebayo, the Lagos State Chairman of the Nigerian Association of Small and Medium Enterprises, NASMI, on the CEO rendezvous, where they examined the current state of the Nigerian economy, issues, challenges, and prospects for MSMEs. As always, it was a no holds barred session. Take a listen. The enabling environment is not there for small business to thrive. The money you are collecting, the environment is going to be, will eventually become a single source of fault because at the end of the day, both the capital and the interest will be consumed by the environment. On this edition, also, we will bring you a rerun of highlights from the investiture ceremony of Mr. Edwin Igbiti as the 51st President and Chairman of Council of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria, CIIN. The very colorful event drew dignitaries from within and outside the insurance industry. Let's check out the excerpts. Fellow of Nigerian Insurance Institute, Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria, having been duly elected as president of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria, do hereby solemnly swear and state as follows that I promise to serve the Shatter Insurance Institute of Nigeria as the president, as the president in accordance, in accordance with the provisions, with the provision of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria, of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria, Act Number 22, Act Number 22 of 1993, of 1993, and other regulations, and other regulations, and others of the institute, and others of the institute. See, I, I. Hey. Congratulations. PremiumBeat.com. Nice. What more can I say than to urge you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the lineup? Details in just a moment. Please stay with us. The biggest fun platform for the insurance industry. Almond Insurance Industry Awards at Consumer Night Yes, yes. Black Survival Edition. Date Friday, November 4th, 2022. Venue Shell Hall Mission Center. Red Carpet 5 p.m. Headliners. OK Bakasi. A cappella. If you worry, boy. Seen it to the comedian. Bo Joint. And many more. Musical performances by Niniola and CDQ. On Wheels of Steel is DJ Daisy. Yo host, Fumbi Fumbi. Tickets, regular 10K, VIP 25K, table of 10, 500K. For a sponsorship, table bookings and tickets, call 0803-335-7879 or 0812-362-4081 or 0813-702-0915 or 0806-603-6158. Remember, no premium, no cover. That's right, no ticket, no entry. Get your ticket now. This event is sponsored by Nikon. Welcome to you. It's a pleasure to have you join us on the CEO Rendezvous this week. I have the honor and privilege to be sitting one on one with the chairman of the Nigerian Association of Small and Medium Enterprises, Lagos State Chapter, 
Professor Adams Adebayo. Together, we'll be looking at the current state of the Nigerian economy, issues, challenges, and prospects for members of his association. Thank you so very much, Prof, for finding time to join us on the program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Prof, uh, let's dive into it real quick. Before the current state of the Nigerian economy, the small and medium enterprise here has been bedeviled with a lot of issues and challenges. Uh, but it's particularly worse in the last two to three years because of COVID and all of the other problems that have come over. But I really want you to put it in perspective. Um, the current state of the Nigerian economy and the challenges that SMEs now face. A lot of policy makers, decision makers have blamed it on the current war between Russia and Ukraine. But to what extent would you say some of these events playing out now are really the real cause of some of the challenges businesses are facing in Nigeria now? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you look at it politically, before the war broke out the invasion of uh, Ukraine by Russia, we had our own challenges here in Nigeria. But a situation where we are looking for whom to blame and what to do, we quickly arrange, just like a woman, a young uh, widow, is in the death of my husband and not made me to bath in the last three months. What has that got to do with what we are doing? Actually, uh, we, we are in a serious and precarious uh, economic mess. Nobody expected what is happening. Well, well, we cannot equally blame the government totally. We have ourselves to be blamed too. But the chunk of the blame goes to those that are formulating the policy by not being proactive in looking inwardly to what they can do and what drives the economy. Go to the United Nations, uh, like the United States of America, what drives their economy in the small businesses. It is the activities of each and every one that contribute together that is driving the economy to make it better off. Small and medium enterprises in Nigeria are not even in the right position. Because these are businesses that have been born for years, and individual knows about commerce, trading, and activities. But even before government intervention, people have been doing very well. But you just find out that policy has been one of the problems that really affected the growth of the small and medium enterprises. If you look at it politically, as at uh, 2000, before 2020, we had over 41.37 million of small, micro, small businesses in Nigeria. Registered in Nigeria? Not really registered, because we have the informal sectors, and we have those that are registered are less than 2 million. Less than 2 million can get that far from the CAC and many of those small businesses. But when we are talking about micro businesses, those who we can see physically, they are not registered, but they are carrying out a lot of activities. Most of these activities are not inclusive in what the government is capturing. For instance, go to the computer village. You see the chunk of millions of Naira being traded within. Every day. Every day, and most of them, they don't even you pass it through bank. So it become very difficult for the bank to really capture that. So these are some of the informal sectors that governments are not really look into. And we don't believe it that these are people that pay a lot of levies. This one will come, somebody selling pure water, somebody selling recharge cap. We will pay close to about 300 naira per day as taxes and levies. And many of those levies is government really are I can try to get into them. I really just a way of getting all these people data. Like what we are saying in advanced country of the world, like the Western world, there is no way you cannot do business in without having a really bank account. You can, because if you look at it, they have reduced the, the activities that you can transact with cash. 
So you must, be, you must have a record of identity where you can be. Over there, they are chasing them to come and collect loan. Here, we are begging for the loan. <laughs> we are still going to come you, to them. Look at all those things. So the activity that is happening over there are not the same activity that is happening with us here in Nigeria. So we need to first of all look at it where do we get it wrong. Because we are privileged to have the oil, which I don't consider as a blessing to us. Even now, when other people, other countries are I'm making benefit. money, <laughs> are making money, we are equally crying. Because we are not benefiting from it, because whatever we are sending out of the country as an export of our oil, which we have not even made up with our quota, definitely we are still going to report it and be paying a high cost, landing cost. And that is why you look at it that the situation that we are we find ourselves is near carelessness. We neglect those that are supposed to have been doing it very well. If the small business are being assisted at the appropriate time. It is not about giving money to the small business that really matter. Okay, Prof, I, yeah. I, let me continue to yourself. Often time, um, you hear when issues of small and medium enterprise in micro businesses comes up. Policy makers tend to focus on finance, on funding, on, you know, or cost of doing business. But I really want to ask, is that the single most important um, element when it comes to small and medium enterprises in Nigeria. Yes, thank you. It, it is an important aspect of it. Funding is, an, is a very general and important aspect of the business. But you need to find out when policymakers are telling you this is exactly what we are going to do. It's just like you lock the vault, you get the key. And you are telling everybody around you, we have fund, we have fund, we have fund. Then how do we access the fund? Then we are now going to give us conditionality that an average small business, business cannot even meet up. There's no way we can meet up with such uh, criteria being demanded for. It is not because we don't want to meet up. For instance, how many, how many small business have collateral? The, the government has given us the collateral registry with Central Bank open. Let, us, let the Central Bank come out with the data of how many of these small businesses have been registered with collateral registry. That they will be able to use. And that thing was not the initial purpose. The initial purpose that you have a landed property and probably perpetual this landed property inherited from your parents. You have not gotten the title document and all that is. And I'm even though you're putting your jewelries, your vehicles, and other, those are the things that collateral register is supposed to stand and register and forward a note, a paper instrument to the lender, which they will now say, okay, A, B, C, D are available. Then let the lender now look at it that well, how do we go about it? But you just find out that they will still be asking you to perfect it, to get all this necessary documentation, and which small business will consider that how much am I getting from this uh, lender, the financial institution, that's how we now continue to spend the money on it. Especially, they will have to push you to a consultant, and the consultant will ask you to go and bring this and bring that, especially in terms of the funding. When the consultant is taking about 3.5% of your total amount, he will tell you uh, those are the, uh, <laughs> the, the cost of that fund, successful, Fund that the, the fund that you have collected that they call it success fee. The success fee does between three point five to five percent of the amount of the loan you are taking. But why is that so? That's an but aberration. This is a, this is part of what the policy makers are supposed to see and eradicate. You have seen me and I'm giving up, I may not have everything, but the information institution should be able to assist the small businesses. Number one, they will tell the small businesses that you don't have the uh, your audited account for three years, your statement of affairs, your management account, and we want to see these are the corporate things that is needed. You need to have all those things needed. Then you have to run around your account for social security or for them to see your record. Yes, it's good because if you don't have your record, you must have your track record of your finance 
so that they will know that you are really qualified for that. They want to see your cash flow. And some of these people, how many of them is really passing all their money to the bank? Because if by at the end of the sales rate from yesterday will be used to turn around today, go to the matter, go to Aspanda, go to Computer Village, go to everywhere where this thing is happening in Lagos, go to all these markets. You see that those money is being exchanged like that. And some of them that are even putting it in the bank, the way they are transferring it is like that. And that is why we have a lot of people that are being digitalized in terms of the, the POS and other things that is coming up now to assist. So the money you are talking about is Jamel is important, but that is not the primary thing that is needed. If you are giving money to somebody that has no money management scheme, do you have that structure that want to take it? Especially now that the inflation is about 20.52, the highest in the last three years, and it's still going to increase as we are going to pick up the change rate from Naira to dollar. You look at all those, then you want to find out. Let's first of all start with what is the exact thing that the small business needs. First of all, identify their need. Number one, not every one of them that made that fund that we're talking about. The fund is important. So might be management issue. It might be the old CEO, a damaging director, calling himself a managing director, but because of lack of knowledge. And then you know that it's not cheap to acquire some of this knowledge when you want to give somebody MBA and other things that you have to do. But you must have demystified some of these things, process. Especially, let's start, let's start with primary bookkeeping. You cannot ask a small business that your capital is just five million to go and hire a shuttle accountant. Shuttle accountant will be taking three, four hundred thousand, six hundred thousand at the end of the day. They are taking all the capital into the there's nothing can do. But there must be uh, some sort of uh, 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 process, some sort of demystified software for primary bookkeeping. Like you have your debit and credit, you have your inventory, you have your stock, and all that. So there must be a way, like that is part of what we are doing now to some of our members. By God's grace, by the end of this year, in another two months, we are going to launch that out to every of our member and anyone that are interested in getting a demystified ERP, a smaller one fashion. We are doing it in, company, in, uh, in conjunction with one with, with a uh, financial technology uh, institution. The fintech, they are almost at the end of their uh, finalizing the project because they have already get it completed and a lot of institutions have even approved it for them. Both uh, terms of accounting, taxation, most central bank is even looking at it too. So that that one is going to be a perfect one that you will do your, your activities on a daily basis and press the process, the machine, the, 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 the software will process it for you and will send you your report. And to be like that until maybe your five days or six days work because Monday to Saturday is what the entrepreneurs work with. We are not like the civil servant that Monday, Monday to Friday, to Friday, eight to five or nine to five. But you find out that the entrepreneur is already there by six a.m., closing by ten p.m. Not because of anything. We have to augment all those things because we cannot employ so much people. So because of that, we just realize that we need some of these structures. So when the structures is being done, and that one is being taken out of it. Then the next thing is how do I manage the fund? Because immediately you have your bookkeeping okay. and all the other structures, then the bank can identify how much you need. Then from there, they will now look at it. How do I utilize this fund? At what cost? I was telling somebody jokingly. I said, people are saying the interest rate is too high, and because of that, uh, people are not making it. It is not a question of the interest rates. Because, really? yes, let me tell you, the enabling environment is not there for small business to thrive. The money you are collecting, the environment is going it will eventually become a single solid fund. Because at the end of the day, all the capital and the interest will be consumed by the environment. The biggest fund platform for the insurance industry. Almond Insurance Industry Awards at Consumer Night is yes, yes, Black Survival Edition. Let's
Date, Friday, November 4th, 2022. Venue, Shell Hall Mission Center. Red Carpet, 5 p.m. Headliners, OK Bakasi, Acapella, If a Worry Boy, Scene Tony Comedian, Bo Joint, and many more. Musical performances by Niniola and CDQ. On Wheels of Steel is DJ Daisy. Your host, Fumbi Fumbi. Tickets, regular 10K, VIP 25K, table of 10, 500K. For a sponsorship, table bookings and tickets, call 0803-335-7879 or 0812-362-4081 or 0813-702-0915 or 0806-603-6158. Remember, no premium, no cover. That's right, no ticket, no entry. Get your ticket now. This event is sponsored by Nikon. All right, well Welcome back. Moving on, we now bring you highlights from the investiture ceremony of Mr. Edwin Igbiti as the 51st President and Chairman of Council of the CIIN at the Intercontinental Hotel Victoria Island, Lagos. Mr. Igbiti is a seasoned professional with depth and wealth of technical expertise. Many believe his coming on board as President of the Council is timely. Happy viewing. The Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria, CIIN, was established in 1959 and recognized by law in 1993, VDA Act number 22. It has the statutory duty of determining the standard of knowledge and skills to be attained by persons seeking to become insurance professionals in Nigeria. The Institute Affairs is directed by the Governing Council, which is chaired by its President and Chairman. The Institute recently installed its 51st President and Chairman of Council, Mr. Edwin Friday Ibiti, at a well-attended event at the Intercontinental Hotel, Victoria Island, Lagos. In his opening remarks, the Chairman of the occasion Chief Dr. Oladele Fajemirokun noted that although the Nigerian insurance industry is bedeviled with a lot of challenges, practitioners have continued to push to change the narratives positively. Insurance regrettably is still at the back waters, exactly what I said earlier, of national economy contributing a paltry 1% to the growth rate domestic product of the nation. What less to rehash some problems that have led to the recession of the industry, bordering on poor image, low public acceptance, and inadequate professional training, impacting on the quality of professional insurance practitioners who interferes with members of the public? In his keynote address, the Deputy Commissioner for Insurance, Al Haji Sabiu Bello Abubakar, implored the new president to take the issue of ethics and professionalism among insurance practitioners seriously. With the goodwill messages taken, the president elect was presented for investiture by his predecessor, Sir M. O. Oyegunle. The man, Edwin Igbiti, is a thoroughbred insurance professional with a wealth of experience in underwriting, sales and claims management. It was therefore with palpable excitement that friends, colleagues and well-wishers witnessed the investiture of Mr. Edwin Igbiti as the 51st president of the CIIN. The honor was done by none other than the doyen of insurance, Olola Olabode Ogunlano. Fellow of Nigerian Insurance Institute, 
Charter Insurance Institute of Nigeria. Having been duly elected as president of the Charter Insurance Institute of Nigeria, do hereby solemnly swear and state as follows that I promise to serve the Charter Insurance Institute of Nigeria as the president, as the president, in accordance, in accordance with the provisions, with the provisions of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria, of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria, Act Number 22, Act Number 22 of 1993, of 1993, and other regulations, and other regulations, and others of the institute, and others of the institute. That I shall always, that I shall always conduct myself, conduct myself, and maintain, and maintain a high standard, a high standard of professional behavior, of professional behavior in the discharge of my duties, in the discharge of my duties as the president, as the president of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria, of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Nigeria, in adherence, in adherence to the ethics, to the ethics and regulation, and the regulation guiding. Profession of Guiding insurance the profession of the insurance in Nigeria. in Nigeria. That's our time on the program this week. Many thanks for being a part of it. Join us again, same time, same station next week for a fresh package. The 2022 Almond Insurance Industry Awards and Consumers Night will hold on the 4th of November at the Shell Hall Muzan Center. Red carpet starts at 5 p.m. As we have been saying, it's the biggest social platform for the insurance industry. Tickets are available now by request only. Regular, 10,000. VIP, 25,000. Table of 10, 500,000. If you're not there, I don't know where you'll be. We are live and we are social. Connect with us on all our social media platforms. Keep a date with us also on our flagship Pigeon English program, Waiting Insurance They Do Self, on Nigeria FM 102.7, every Wednesday by 9.45 a.m. live, powered by Nikon. My name is Lucy Lugbe. Enjoy our parting shot this week. Bye-bye.